sack by Gardak. I'm Dennis Gardak, linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. As an undersized high school player, to playing Division II, to working at McDonald's, my path has been anything but ordinary. While I've been rehabbing, I've spent a lot of time in our facility. During this time, I've gotten to hear some amazing stories from our staff. And it's always fascinated me hearing how everyone in the building has gotten here. And if there's one thing we all have in common, it's how uncommon our journeys have been. And this is how I got here. What's up guys, it's Dennis Gardeck. We're back with another episode of How I Got Here. As an undrafted guy, I'm asked to fill into a bunch of different roles and do a bunch of different things. Today, we're gonna to be talking to the guys that do exactly that, the equipment managers. What up guys, how we doing? Dennis, how we doing? I'm here with Jeff Schwimmer and Parker Brown. These are our assistant equipment managers. Equipment manager, kind of a, kind of a vague term. What exactly is your job title? in your own words. For you guys, what we provide is to make sure that you don't have to worry about anything. Parker, what, what, anything to add to that? What would, what would you say? I mean, say? it just kind of goes back, like even like training camp, like everything. I mean, we move everything from here to Glendale. So we basically reset this whole entire equipment room in Glendale with the, with the goal of the same thing, kind of using, you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. When you show up for camp, when you show up for practice, when you show up for game day, when you come in to get a lift, like there shouldn't be mm -hmm. anything that you need from us. You should be able to focus on whatever you're doing. Yeah. They keep me right with the uh, Big League Chew uh, bubble gum, sour apple. It's not, um, can't really find it anywhere. Shout out to, it, it, you know, shout out to Schwimmer, Parker, and KB, Kenny Bill. It's a credit to them. You know, we have, what, 53 players, and they got to remember everything everybody loves, how they like it, and they do it, you know, expeditiously. You know, they, it's never no time wasted. Uh, if anything you need, they go get it. I've kind of noticed how seamless things have been, like when we get to the, to game day our lockers are pretty much set up exactly how they are here we have all the same stuff and it keeps us from coming back to you like hey where's this or where's that it's because goal, we it already doesn't always know. work that way yeah. i mean you know we got like chase evans for example like we may put a red tight on his game day loop mm -hmm. he's going to come ask for one we'll put a brand new one on he we know he throws it away after every game but we know he's going to come up and get it i always need my my uh i don't even know what they call them what the word is from but like we call them uh turf tape or behind the back of my arms. That's something I always need for my guys. And I always go to the game day uniform and I always go to swim. Parker already always knows I need my white cheaters. And then swim usually gives me the red tights. And then Mark gives me the uh, the white sleeveless shirt. And it's kind of like, it's just the thing, man. Like, you know, each person always gives me that set of thing. I can't go to nobody different for it, you know, or else just kind of throw it off on game day. Easily a towel, it's gotta be cut. That, that's one of the, the requests. It's gotta be cut. A medium undershirt. I only use a medium because we don't have tight shirts anymore. So that's that's the tightest shirt. Um, an XL warm-up shirt. It's got to be cut at the neck. Part of the beauty of this is we get to learn these guys' routines and and learn like you on a personal level almost, which yeah. is different. As long as we're unnoticed and we're just down here working and grinding and making sure you guys are comfortable, all is well. You know, those were probably the first two guys that I met outside of being on the plane with you know. Uh, Mr. Bidwell, they made my experience so much easier. Obviously, taking care of my jersey number, all that stuff, helmets, cleats, um, stuff like that. But it's a blessing to have those two, you know, in my corner this whole time. They're like family for sure. You know, I, I can hit them up for anything. Um, you know, they like I said, they do everything for me. Um, you know, being the quarterback, obviously, is a tough job. But you know, they make it a lot easier with packages, food, cl you know, clothing, equipment. Um, if I if I leave some of that facility, they'll bring it to me from the crib. Like it's they, they've done a lot for me, and I you know I, I really appreciate everything they've done. You know everybody's kind of got their own superstitions and stuff like that. Have you guys been asked to do anything strange? Like they want like a a bottle of water at 76 degrees, or like any sort of crazy I mean, traditions on like where guys want with their pants. Not necessarily with their here, shoes. but I've seen guys that ask for a whole case of water on game day and consume mm -hmm. quite a bit of it. You just they want a fresh pair of tights, kind of like Chase's deal, or they want this, or they want More that. More so it's or... guys that they wear the same shirt. Yeah. I mean, we've had guys that, I've worn this shirt since I was in high school. Every game, it's just they're something that they like, and we gotta make sure it's there. Even if you don't tell us, we just try to notice, like, Dennis wears this on game day. He, he's asked for it two or three times now, let's make sure he has it. It's something that looking back, now that we're having this conversation that I can say like, wow, like I, I didn't have to ask for this or that. We have a, like an equipment folder and it's got 
different size sheets. It's got a tape list. Who likes their shoulder pads taped? Who doesn't? How do they like them taped? What size t-shirt do you wear? What size sweats? Because some guys wear different sizes and different things. All that stuff that kind of keeps us one step ahead. I remember my rookie year when, you know, coming from Fordham, I got my first custom helmet. And that was, that was like, what the hell is this? You know, I got that my custom helmet with a signature in the back of it. I remember swim, uh, fitting me in the helmet and everything like that. And to fast forward, you know, four years, the relationship that we we as players have with Swimming Parker, man, and Mark is just unbelievable. I mean, those guys, I feel like those guys deserve so much more attention than what they get. And they, they do all the hard work behind the scenes for us. Kind of like offensive linemen, they don't really get all the stats, all the, you know, the glam, the social media coverage and stuff like that, the endorsements. But um, yeah, they're behind the scenes. They're the unsung heroes. You know, they do so much for me, my teammates, uh, Coach Kingsbury, all the coaches. Um, you know, without them, we, we aren't who we are, and I, I can say that 100%. Uh, they help at practice, within the practice. Um, no, they just do so much. You guys are like some of the first people new guys are kind of introduced to when we're, when we're going through the equipment with the rookies. What is that transition like when, when you're getting a new player or something like that, especially like the vets that we have brought in lately, like where you're kind of having to play catch up and you want it to keep it seamless? Well, sometimes it depends, uh, kind of the timing of it. You know, maybe we catch word that a guy's coming in or sometimes not necessarily blindsided, but it's quickly moving. Mm -hmm. um, we may get some information from an, you know, another equipment manager may mm -hmm. tell us, you know, expect this guy, this is helmet, this is what he wears, this is what he likes, which is really helpful. On a personal level for us, you feel like you've really like helped them, you know, yeah. you feel like you've upgraded them in a, in a sense, mm -hmm. like you've given them options that they've never had before. All right, Dennis, so let's, uh, let's put you on the spot and put you to work. Let's see if you can uh, take care of your own helmet. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right, I guess we're gonna test my skills and, and see if I know what I'm doing. This is how a helmet comes in after game Typically, day. Typically, this is a Monday after a game, yes. And this is your helmet. So we're gonna go ahead and just let you just clean it up. Yeah. We're gonna inspect it. a lot it. of hard work and dedication right there. What are, so what are we looking for? Are we looking for? Well, first we'll probably, you know, check over the mask. You know, we'll look at it. We see like some gouges. Uh, a lot of times we look to see if they're spread by spread. We'll see these earpieces here. We'll go ahead and just clean it up. Use a little alcohol, trying to get some of the the, the uh, marks off. I'm gonna go ahead. I, I don't want you to any any tips, any advice. I'm just gonna go ahead see what I can. I'm gonna go at it as hard as I can, and I'm gonna see what I can do. And uh, while I'm going at it okay. as hard as I can, um, could you just tell me a little bit? about yourself, kind of where, how, how do you get started in equipment manager? Where are you from? How many years have you been with us? So I grew up uh, in Speedway, Indiana, and I was a Colts fan growing up, you know, Colts fan my whole life, and got the opportunity in high school to uh, become a ball boy. How'd you manage to get that? A friend of mine in high school was doing it. He was gonna graduate. I was, uh, you know, just kind of right place, right time almost. And those guys were a ton of fun to work for. We had a great time. They took good care of us, and then, once I graduated high school, I played college football for a year, and then I decided, well, you know, I got an opportunity. They called me, they're like, hey, would you come back as an intern? Kind of weighed my options. Is football really something like yeah. I'm gonna be doing the rest of my life, or do I wanna stick in football and maybe do something I can really enjoy? So I, I went that route and started doing equipment stuff. Interned there for five or six years, kind of kept my foot in the door. I wanna see if we can get a close-up over here. This is, this is a non, contact related mess we got on here. Halftime got a little bit crazy. I did notice that. I was curious once we got the mask off what exactly it was. What is that? A, it's is applesauce. That <laughs> it's applesauce. <laughs> Halftime got a little crazy. All right, so one year in college, you got the opportunity to come back. What, what year is this? 2005 is when I started. And then uh, 2006, we went to the Super Bowl in Indy and won. I was a part of that. So who's who's on the team in Indy at this point? Kind of said. And we're talking like the Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne era. Oh. You're you're hey, on a good I roll. Was, I was given a tool and told to figure it out. I put the pointy end in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> what a doubt that'll work. So any of this hardware that we get, we take off after a game use. It's done. It's done. Anytime a mask is changed, I change all the hardware. But don't forget the inside too now. Okay, okay, okay. You all got right. all that hair, you know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're in Indy 2005. Kind of walk us through your next steps. So I did my internships, kind of figured out like, man, I, can I afford doing this? Like it's, it, it was, 
It's a great experience. It was almost like a trade school. I decided like, you know, I'm gonna go another route. I worked for Pat McAfee for a little while, and then I got a call from Chuck Pagano. He had a position open as assistant to the head coach. I was like, well, if there's any shot to get my foot back in, this is it. Did that for a year and uh, got really close to BA. Found out that coaching was not necessarily something I was ready for or wanted to do. I really missed the equipment part. I wasn't on the field anymore. I missed that part of it. And I just, the BA called me and was like, hey, we've, we've got an opportunity out here in Arizona. Would you be willing to come out? And I jumped all over it and here I am. Cool. All right, I think I'm ready for whatever my next step is. All right, so we're ready. Let's go ahead. We've got two clips. We'll go on the top, two clips that will go on the bottom. I'll even let you cheat here. We'll start with, let's take this mask and mimic this mask. These just kind of shoot on through. Yep. This is also good rehab for my hand. <laughs> there we go. Snap it on. Woo! We want, we want the, this top chin, chin strap. Yeah, you gotta make sure that's inside the mask. We're gonna change these out. So these are gonna be the quick release T-nuts on the inside. Oh, I mean, shake in there. Ooh. So you don't get those cat-like reflexes with all your interns. Click. Okay, that's what we're looking for, the click. There it is. Yep. Golly. Okay. Like so. You ready to roll. All right, what's next? Oh, we're gonna decal? Yeah, let's take those decals off. This time I'm gonna pay close attention to kind of where I'm at. You know, fool me once, shame on me. That's right. Shame on you. Fool me, I can't get fooled again. That's right. You're gonna rip those off and you'll, they'll leave some residue. So we'll get back to our alcohol. Yeah. Are we doing both sides of you? Yep, we always do them both. Okay. We don't cut corners here in the... Uh, and the, 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 most, the most important thing is to make sure that the backs of the bird match in the back. Is this the polishing motion you use? Yeah, wax on, wax off. Uh-oh. A little extra residue right here. Wow, that's All a right. shiny helmet right there. It's looking good. You don't want to know how it is because it doesn't sit. That's not how my head is. Now my you got to think. There. Look at how the cardinal is like on the, your t-shirts and shirts. I mean, you got to think. You got to. You got to keep it level. And then you got to think about well, what's level in the helmet? Yeah. You know, the helmet's going to yep. sit like this. Yeah. So you can kind of base that levelness off of the face mask here, where your line of sight's going to be. Wasn't hitting anything. Yeah, you're way off. Let me get you started. No, 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 no. We never quit. <laughs> we never quit. That's not the equipment manager way. No, that doesn't it's look tough. right. That doesn't look right. How'd I do? Other than the being bubbled and wavy, it's it's in the right spot. I'll okay. Okay. Now let's do the other side. So I feel like the key for this one is uh, getting a bird's eye view. <laughs> Didn't. Now you're onto something, using your landmarks. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's game worthy, but you're getting there. How long does it take when it take one of you guys to do this? Like, I mean, when we clean helmets in the afternoon, I probably do maybe a dozen. How did I do? I think you did pretty well. I don't know, I see some residue over here. I feel like this one should, probably should have been tighter. I mean, that, in, in our, Pre-game fine tuning, going back over them and, and this one's definitely wiping them down. Like we and, and you would, some of the way we do, you would, might practice in it for days. So yeah. game day, we're gonna wipe them all down anyways, fresh them all up. But I think that's for your first time is pretty good. We got a shot here. Good, good. Where well are we done. To next. Well, I think you're gonna go hit up Parker and maybe look over some uniforms and. Uh, not sure if there's some shoes involved or not, but uh, I appreciate you visiting. All right. Yeah, thank this you. This was great. All right, Parker, we're deep in the trenches. I feel like I'm not allowed back here by myself. Um, walk me through what we got going on. So kind of this this wall back here, you see that's our kind of our helmet and shoulder pad storage. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of a light selection of what we have, but they're all kind of by size, by style. And then when you go down this side, for kind of our color rush games and alternate games, these are our black and red. We've tried guys in four or five different helmets before they found what's best. And guys always ask, what's the best helmet? And there really isn't a best helmet. I mean, even when they're ranked, it's what fits you the best. It's not about the look as much, even though a lot of guys want it to be about the look. It's not about the look, it's about the, it's about the fit. 
All right, Parker, I was talking to Schwim kind of about his journey. He started in high school. Can you talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, how you even got it started and then kind of your journey to where you're at now? So, actually, I guess started kind of a weird way. I was playing high school baseball. Played high school baseball and football growing up. I was playing in a baseball game. The head football coach was talking to my dad, and he was like, hey, has you know, Parker ever thought about, like, when he goes to school, working for the football team? It's like, I, th there's jobs. Have him come talk to me. So I went and talked to him, and he was like, you should try being an equipment guy. Actually, my first freshman year, I volunteered, and then worked four years at USF, worked a year as an intern with the Dolphins, and then I've been here since 2013. Yeah. Still didn't really think of it as like a profession that I would like do forever, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Went to business school, got a business degree, figured out like none of that was for me. And then as I kept going at South Florida, it was like, man, I, I could really like, I could, I could do this forever. And then tried it in, when, in the league with the Dolphins and realized like this is something that I really enjoy doing. You know, and I've been doing it for, this is my 10th season now. So how did, how did you get here from, from Miami? So when I left USF, I sent my resume to all 32 teams. I had a couple interviews, and then like the Dolphins called out of the blue. A guy I went to college with who was actually interning there, and he called like, hey, a spot just opened up, like, do you want it? And I was like, absolutely. After, when I went to Miami, I was, it was still in that phase of like, is this something that I want to do or something that like I can make a career out of? And once doing it for a year, I, I realized like, this is something I, I really enjoy. And then the, I did the same kind of thing where I, my internship was ending and I just sent my resume out again and those guys, like I love those guys in there, they taught me, they taught me a ton and they actually reached out to Mark and kind of helped me get in here and then when I got hired here I was actually a season long intern. So I did two years interning here and then I was lucky enough to get hired. Yeah, that is so. a similarity that I've kind of seen between both you and um, Schwim, like you got your the foot in the door early and then kind of always just stayed around and stayed around and kept building connections and then eventually kind of it clicks. All right, let's go reconnect with Schwim and uh, see what he's up to. Let's do it. All right, so we're here with a slightly taller, slightly less good looking version of yours truly on game day. He's got the uh, ultimate warrior bands on, the, the cleats I wear, everything, kind of get the swag right for uh, this, this next week. Um, I want to thank both of you for, for A, taking some time out and doing this interview, but also what you guys do behind the scenes before we get there um, and, and each day at practice and everything. I really appreciate what you guys do for us. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode of How I Got Here.